love you All the good times we had, I wish I could repeat them For the past three months Love and feeling a little fever what's good everyone welcome back to another video so today we're going to be reacting to kid cuddy the defeat of mr ranger if you don't know mr ranger's alter ego and yeah i don't know too much i like kid cuddy his first album was my favorite album some songs throughout all the other man on the moons and this one and that album it's okay, but it's not good as the first one. Well, I can't say that. I haven't full listened to all the other albums, but I am a Kid Cudi fan. I'm a, I'm not a stan. I'm not a crazy fan, but I fuck with Kid Cudi. He influenced me. Yeah. But let's get into this video. Be sure to follow my guy right here. Like the video. Let's get into it. On December 11th, we were invited back into Kid Cudi's mind, his dreams and his darkest corners. The album reads, in the last 10 years, Scott has been through hell and back. After feeling like his world was over, he found hope and overcame the darkness that was plaguing his life. But happiness isn't forever. What he thought was peace turns into a nightmare. He finds himself lost, dealing with the same pain he had not felt in years. In one night, he must face himself again and fight to win back his soul from the evil Mr. Rager. Mm -hmm. The album is divided into four acts. Return to Madness, The Rager, The Menace, Heart of Rose Gold, and Powers. I didn't rush to listen to this album on the first day it came out. Once I saw that there were different acts, I knew that I had to sit down and listen fully, then pick apart each act and song individually. It's that kind of album. There's power behind it. There's a story behind it. There's truly a human connection that comes with each Kid Cudi album, especially the Man on the Moon series and the completion mm -hmm. of the trilogy. Beautiful Trip introduces the first act. Return of Madness marks the liftoff to Mother Moon. Curating an effective introduction was a must for this album, as it's a completion to the trilogy after a decade. With the notes and chord progressions holding the same kind of takeoff in the first album of the trilogy, especially mimicking in my dreams. To give an album like this a psychedelic introduction is a given, especially when entering Kid Cudi's space. Being both powerful and influential, Beautiful Trip really does set the tone. Mm -hmm. With next to no lyrics and playing off just the melody of Kid Cudi's sound, really shows how influential he is and different to his peers. Beautiful Trip falls into darkness with tequila shots, alcohol abuse, Cuddy didn't shy away from speaking about his toxic relationship with both drugs and alcohol. Tequila Shots acts like a real lyrical introduction and is also a macro state to Kid Cuddy's career. Especially looking at the emotional roller coaster in junction with his past projects within the first verse, accompanied with the mantra, can't stop this war in me. As Tequila Shots fades out, the drinking and party binge continues with another day. It is important to understand that during the binge, we are brought with him to an episodic state of depression, which the lyrics mock throughout the song. Although he has been here before, he does not visit this space like he has once before. Hence the lyrics, thank God I saw another day, and nothing has changed in him, giving the whole idea that the old him is back, meaning that this is not his first rodeo. The curation of the story continues with the visual component released parallel with the album, with Cuddy on a booze bender, watching the pursuit of happiness acting as a trinity of influence, with Will Smith in the movie speaking and inspiring Cuddy, while Jaden Smith, his son, has taken heavy inspiration from Cuddy throughout his career, which would undoubtedly affect Will Smith throughout his life. Rather than watching his drink or drugs, he takes a dive. When looking at each song in the act, you can see a ramp up mimicking Kid Cudi's drinking habit to a very subtle sobering drop towards the end of each song. Especially with the end of Dive concluding with the entrance of Mr. Rager. 
You and Mr. Rager. From the first sound in Act 2, you can feel the sadness. You can feel Mr. Rager. You may be wondering, who is Mr. Rager to Kid Cudi, after countless amount of sightings in his career? Mr. Rager is the dark voice. The coked out Cudi. He spoke to Complex a bit more deeply about Mr. Rager. This song is about someone who is fed up with reality, who looks for thrills and excitement by any means. It's kind of just how I was feeling at a point, I was just so angry. Doing coke revived me, and knowing I was close to death every time intrigued me, I liked the thought of it. He further points that this is not a split personality, Mr. Rager is him, but as a destructive mind state where he does not think clearly, especially with heaven on earth being welcomed with rager mode, saying he's stuck in his ways. The visual accompanying heaven on earth shows Cuddy watching the pursuit of happiness, continuing while Cuddy has already gone off edge, where Jaden states, there was a man who was drowning and a boat came, and the man on the boat said, do you need help? And the man said, no thanks, God will save me. Then another boat came and he tried to help him, but he said, no thanks, God will save me. Then he drowned and went to heaven. Then the man told God, why didn't you save me? And God said, I sent you two big boats to give you a second chance. <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah, it's very funny, man. Come here. Mm -hmm. Echoing back to Kate Cuddy being given the chance before his dive, but not reaching out to others, pushing the lifeboat out. His demons are out and Mr. Rager is here to stay. Show out is the deepest dive into Mr. Rager, the least associated that he can become with Scott. The aggressiveness with Show Out is unreal to hear from Kid Cudi, but the violent themes and lyricism is more associated with Skepta and Pop Smoke. But the entire enragement once again comes to a halt, a come down from the high of Mr. Rager, a realization of actions that end the act too. Not fighting against the reality of Mr. Rager, but realizing the danger of the mind state. The third act holds the theme of isolation and reflection. Sad people is the dreams after being kept up from a come down. The reflection, the initial thoughts without holding back. The part where he was drowning but kept swimming, realizing there's a life raft and there always was for him. Cuddy streams deep down into his childhood by relating to the film Stand By Me, highlighting his childhood that every Kid Cuddy fan is familiar with his father's passing, his single mother, and being the youngest sibling of four, frighteningly lost and alone. This is accompanied by a love-like ballad of September 16th, being his girlfriend Raquel's birthday. The first half of this act essentially highlights the two greatest things he can reminisce about, his family and his girlfriend, especially with the life goes by hook. After looking at others, he decides to look solely at himself. His mental health. The void is the deepest and darkest parts of his mind, but explored in a different light. Instead this time with a brighter, more positive outlook among exploration. Saying that his days are low, but he'll give it a try. He's seeing new things in his soul, when sitting in his room all alone. Diving into his mind gratefully with a bigger perspective, with the intention of healing, which runs onto the idea of love and me. Cuddy emphasizes the importance of self-love, the defeat of Mr. Rager. This song and end of this act emphasizes the growth and defeat of a defeating mindset. Love and Me shows ever most vulnerability. It shows that Cuddy recognizes where he went wrong, what is needed for change and the final abandonment of Mr. Rager. Moving to the final act powers, Cuddy takes power. He is now in control. Saying that he has found another ground, a higher level of happiness. With the use of his mental tools, he can battle his lowest lows. And now we've found new ground. Rockstar Knights flows into the fulfillment journey of forward thinking. His Rockstar Knights are no longer alone and coked out, but rather striving while living his dream, while serving happiness to millions around the world. Understanding the effect that he has on his listeners is something that Cuddy has always struggled with. Clearly accepting and moving forward with this thought now by saying flippin' millions servin' feelings, where he carries that same thought over to four to kids, a dedication to his fans, while creating a closing for the final act, where he expresses the mantra of him being with them, and that they're never alone. Once again, Cuddy expressed to Zane Lowe that he never viewed what others saw in him, 
he did not grip the understanding of the influence that he had when he did such great things. For Cuddy to realize this, his life and influence in a bigger perspective, shows his growth achieved from Man on the Moon 1. This album was about the defeat of Mr. Rager, but in reality there is no promise that he will never come back, as he likely will. But this time it's rather how he reacts to his lows, his depression, and his darkest points in his life. All of this reminds me of Mac Miller's circles. Restarting your circle mm, isn't yeah. actually a new beginning, because this time you have new tools to combat the dark side. Life is about growth, and we're lucky enough to go through this journey with the wonderful written lyrics of Kid Cudi. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. It was an absolute pleasure to analyze. I'm glad he analyzed them. I got some things to say. <clears throat> I feel like... I may not know a lot about Kid Cudi, but I feel like... I always want to, you know when you watch certain people, and you're like, why do they think how they think? You think you know what the fuck is going on in their life? They might tell you everything that might be going on in their life, but they don't tell you shit. That's how I felt like about Kid Cudi, Mac Miller, Anderson Pat. Who else? Vince Staples, like it's like a handful of artists, even Frank Ocean, and Tyler Creator. It's like a handful of artists. They'll be telling you everything that's going on for me, but it's something where you want to sit back and just talk to them yourself and ask them all the questions. Like, why do you do this? Well, how are you, why do you like that? Matt Miller, we can't do that. Rest in peace, but. He he dealt with that type of stuff. Yeah, I remember watching an interview with Kid Cudi. He said he went to rehab. He did it for his daughter. Because he don't want his daughter growing up, you know, seeing her father like a disappointment and everything. No. I, I get it. I get it 100%. He did it for himself. He feel like he need to heal some more and everything else. No one's perfect. Let's just say that. Kid Cudi, he... His music will live on for a long time. Because of this, I want to go deeper into Kid Cudi. Like, like I want to learn about him myself. One day, I hope I can meet him and talk to him and even interview him one day. That being said, I give my flowers to Kid Cudi. I'm a huge fan. Your first album, that's how I felt most of high school. So, I understand. I, I honestly understand. It's a lot of emotions going on. Like, I when I'm watching it, and plus the dude, my dude talking. He talking like, um, he's talking like a therapist or something. Like, I don't know. Like, it's how he's talking. He's like talking from like a. So, you see he's doing this, and I understand you're doing this. That's how he's talking. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm just, people like Kid Cudi, Tyler Creator, Vince Staples, they interest me. I just want to pick their mind. I don't want to, like, the music only do so much. The music is like a surface level to me. Talking to that person, letting that person talk is a lot deeper. But that person is talking when you're rapping, but it's different because you're trying to do it over beats and everything else. I don't want you to do it verbally, just me and you talk. You know, that's what I liked it. That's something I'm, that's how I learn about people. I learn about musicians. If I don't watch 5,000 interviews about them, so I can understand how they think, I would need to talk to them in person. I hope one day I get to talk to all them artists in person. Not Matt Miller, unless I see him on the other side. Or when I see him on the other side. If y'all don't believe that, whenever you see him. In your dreams, I don't fucking know. But, no disrespect, though. Um, that being said, be sure to like, subscribe. Support my boy. Um, his YouTube channel will be in the link below. And stay tuned to the next video. Peace. Actually, I forgot.
special guest, Black Dude Optimus Prime. Boom. <laughs>